It's a great day in SimWorld, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving and welcome to SimWorld Today. I'm B-Ron and joining me for the morning is Maestro. Maestro, happy Thanksgiving to you, my friend. Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving to you, my brother. How are you doing today? And I was happy Thanksgiving to SimWorld Universe, baby. Yes, happy Thanksgiving to you all as well. And hey, Maestro, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. We, but we got some things to get to. The show must go on, even on Thanksgiving. Let's get into it first, first starting with the SWFL, because there is some football today, as is tradition. And we got three games on the schedule for today. Detroit and Chicago at 12.30. New York Giants face the Dallas Cowboys at 4.30. And then the 8.20 game tonight is Miami taking on Green Bay. Uh, let's give our predictions for these games. I want to give it lead, I'll give it to you first, my throw. Who you got in these games? Well, I tell you, you know, it's hard to go against the, the Lions right now, regardless of what happened last week, just because of how Chicago is playing. Uh, d you know, the idea of Thanksgiving football and 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 Detroit is just, you know, I don't have to tell you, it goes back to the eight, it goes back to 1800s, even before there was the Detroit Lions. I think it was the Detroit, I don't know, Spirit, spirit makers or something like that some crazy <laughs> name back in the 1800s you know and uh so you know it's just hard to go against that team i'm so glad they're playing well i'm so glad that they still have the thursday game so i'm going with the Lions in the first game johnson cowboys uh that's a game of hot hot garbage uh i'm going to actually say that i'm really thinking that uh, the Cowboys are going to find a way to come out just because the Giants are, you know, in it for Shadur Sanders, I guess, or whatever they're going to do. And uh, maybe even Deion Sanders, since everybody keeps talking that noise, which makes me want to, you know, put my finger in a blender and just keep it going until, you know, I decide that, you know, you know the itching stops. Uh, <laughs> the, the main idea, though, is just that game is just going to be a hot mess. I think I'm going to sleep during that game, uh, which means it's probably going to be great. Um, but in the last game, the best game of the day, the Dolphins in Green Bay, I'm really going to I'm really going to lean on the Dolphins. I'll tell you why they're playing so well since two has come back, even though I know the rules. I know what everybody says, you know, from the old school coaching days, a cold team is not a fast team. Right. But the Dolphins find a way to play fast, and now with Tua being off the injury list, and with Tua being back, and the and and I can I cannot imagine any quarterback who is more important to their team than Tua. If you look at their record and what's going on, I have a feeling that he's going to be able to pull Miami through today against Green Bay. I like it. Solid, solid. So I'm going to go a different direction uh, for maybe a couple of these. We'll see. Uh, I'm picking Detroit in the first game. Yeah, they've historically struggled on Thanksgiving. I think they've lost like their last seven on Thanksgiving or something like that. But I think, like I, I, said, I said the other day on the show, this Lions team is different this season. And I think that we'll see that again in their game uh, this afternoon when they beat the Bears. Uh, Dallas and Dallas and Giants. The I'm Bears. Gonna take, I'm going to take the Cowboys in this one. Uh, also, I think that the Giants are a little bit more of a mess than the Cowboys are at the moment. Uh, especially with, you know, no real quarterback there. Uh, in my personal opinion, I think that does make a difference. And yeah, Dak Prescott's a better quarterback than Tommy DeVito. Uh, if him trust me, otherwise I think you're lying to me. <laughs> uh, and then in the last game, I'm gonna take the Packers. I really like what they're doing this season. They're at home, and to and I I think that uh it's it's it's, it's November now, so it's starting to get a little cold. Miami is warm weather state for the longest time, and if cold to them is is 60 degrees, it's gonna be even colder, and I think that that's gonna be a problem uh for the Dolphins. So I, I think that the Packers will end up winning that game uh, to finish off the night, Maestro. Uh, let's keep it rolling. Speaking of the the uh, Giants, their former quarterback, Daniel Jones, he cleared waivers and ended up signing with the Vikings, Maestro. What do you think about that move? I think I, th I, think, I really think it's going to save his career. And I'll, I'll tell you that. I've said this before. Quarterbacks are being brought up way too early with too many expectations. They're not sitting because of the money that they're getting. And because especially, you know, I'm going to I'm going to make this specific about Daniel Jones in a minute. But because of this expectation of what these quarterbacks are doing in college, we expect them to come and do that right away in the NFL. And it does not work that way. Not everybody can translate so easily. Correct. So then we have this example of 
Daniel Jones coming up with the New York Giants team with very little coaching, very little offensive help, very little, very little uh, support going on the other side. And what happens? He puts himself in a position where what? He is not able to perform. Well, what about Eli was there too? Yeah, but Eli is a coach unto himself. He comes from a family that allows him to be able to produce that on the regular. And oh, by the way, Eli coaches quarterbacks. So he was a different fit. Daniel Jones did not have those advantages. But with Kevin O'Connell in Minnesota, his career is not going to have a chance because look at what Kevin has done with the Jets throwaway quarterback, Sam Darnold. Look at what he's done with other quarterbacks who everybody kept saying, yeah, that's it for them because he was a quarterback who is very cerebral, understands the game, and understands how to coach and teach the game to other quarterbacks. And Daniel Jones is now has a chance to benefit from that to finally get his uh, – actual bachelors and maybe even masters in being an NFL quarterback. <laughs> I wish I could be as optimistic as you about Daniel Jones Maestro, but I can't. Uh, I've, I, yeah, yeah, the Giants were a mess of an organization for sure. Uh, but I personally was never sold on Daniel Jones from the get-go, uh, being as high as a pick as he was for the Giants when he was drafted. Uh, I do, I do, I do like what uh, you know, Coach O'Connell's done with the quarterbacks. Uh, Sam Bradford, Sam Darnold, uh, Kirk Cousins, in particular. Uh, I always thought that all of those guys were mid-tier quarterbacks, and Kirk, especially, has come alive the last few seasons, in particular, and he's got himself into maybe that you know uh, upper tier conversation, not on the level of a guy like Pat Mahomes, obviously, but he's in that upper upper echelon of of your mid to solid tier quarterbacks. Uh I don't think the same will be true for Daniel Jones. Do I think it's a good fit? Uh sure, be given given what we know, sure. But do I think it's going to matter in the grand scheme of things? No, I don't. Uh I just think that Jones is a average to below average quarterback. I haven't I personally haven't really seen any, anything to make me believe that uh, consistent, consistently anyway, to make me believe that he's anything other than that uh, throughout his time so far in the SWFL. I want to be proved wrong on that. I really, really do. So I'm not saying this to be a hater, uh, just based on what I've seen so far. But I will like to be proved wrong on that, and I am willing to say that if it does indeed turn around, that I am wrong. But until proven otherwise, I don't see it happening, man. Just don't see it happening. Well, look, we got some hoops action to get to as there was some similar U action yesterday. And okay. one of the games yesterday was really good. Ranked contest between TCU and North and number 16 North Carolina. And it was Nene Gibson who played the hero for the Horn Frogs as he ended up hitting the game winning basket for the Horn Frogs to upset. Number 16, North Carolina, 73 to 72, my show. I look, I I I've been I've been I've been a big fan of Nene Gibson for a while since his Super Bowl prep days, my show. And to see him kind of blossom into the guy he's become in, in, in his first season with the Horn Frogs, playing alongside his cousin, uh Craig Gibson, I, that is phenomenal. I'm so happy for him. Uh, and he was really, uh, really good yesterday. 10 of 18. That's 55% from the field. Uh, shooting wise, I, I, he did a little bit of everything too, Maestro. 23 points, four rebounds, two assists, and a block. And that brings you right to where I was thinking there, B Ron. What led up to those points at the end of the game were the stops that TCU was able to get led by the defense that uh, Nene put up uh, leading into that. You know me. You know, I love the stats. I love to see how that goes down. I love to see how that works out. I, lo I love who does what. But, you know, I like to talk about how it came about, right? Did you, did you notice how TCU reset their defense for the latter half of the second half to allow themselves to be in that arm reach position that you and I always talk about to yep. be able to to be able to strike. Well, guess what? If you don't get think think let's, let's go let's go back to the last six possessions. 
you know, you know, missed shot rebound. Uh, bucket made. I'm, I'm talking about North Carolina. Mi uh, missed shot, TCU rebound. Bucket made, TCU presses up. Quick bucket. Missed shot, and then, then, then North Carolina went. Contested shot, contested shot, contested shot. Make shot, and then guess what? TCU's right there, and they were, and the Horn Frogs were able to strike. So those moments where you say every possession matters, we don't get that last possession. We don't get that shot made without the defense and the stops that came up before that. Yeah, exactly. Defense is always a huge part, especially in those kinds of games, Maestro. And you know, North Carolina, they have since they've you know played their games on Simbo TV, they looked really good. It looked like they're on the cusp of being back. Um, this loss is definitely going to hurt them a little bit, but I don't think it's going to affect them too much in the grand scheme of things. Much. I think that they'll still be uh, fine when we get to ACC play and then when you talk about your hoopsteria time of the year, I think they'll be right there in the thick of the conversation for a uh, decently high seed potentially front come hoopsteria. Agreed, agreed. And, you know, uh, you know, a team like that, they're always going to find a way to do what? They're always going to find a way to 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 be relevant because of how they play and because of there's a lot of institutional memory inside that building. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, look, Thanksgiving Maestro, I just want to take a minute and we can each go through and say one thing that we are thankful for this year. Uh I'm going to start first here. Uh I, I'm I because we're on Sim World today, I'm going to keep it Sim World focused here. I just want to thank all. I'm thankful for the community that we've built throughout the course of these last three years on uh, here in SimWorld. This is the greatest sports community that I've had the pleasure to be a part of. It allows me to uh, pursue my dreams of being commentator and broadcaster and analyst, all that kind of stuff. Being all being all the sports in some shape, fashion, or form. So that's what I'm grateful for that I have the ability to do this because of SimWorld and the community to be able to showcase those skills too. My short about what about you? You know what? I, I'm going to say something here. Uh, later on uh, today, uh, when Talking Dirty drops, I actually give an entire segment to giving thanks, but something I did not say there is grateful to SimWorld as well for, and I'm just going to be blunt about it, bringing me back to the world of basketball. Uh, I stepped away for a number of years for a lot of different reasons. And, you know, everybody here, the family here has given me a reason to come back to basketball and just to revise my love for this game and, and, and all the, the things that I learned from this game. Absolutely. I love it. I love it, man. Well, look, we, let's, we got one more thing for today, and it's, of course, the symbol you wrap up. Let's get right into that, shall we? Rutgers in our first broadcasted game. Beat Oklahoma 80 to 79. You know, you have, you know, you have a feeling of the ambiance, the sight lines normalized because now you're taking them. Hey, they're big 6 11 now. 242 pounds. And in the process of that one, Florida State ends up taking a loss to Baylor 52 4 through 5 in the slugfest that that game was. Very defensive focus, but Baylor able to get the win. Michigan State had five players scoring double in double digits. To get a convincing win over Iowa State, 77 to 58. VCU and Arkansas, Rizbats get back on track with a 98-6 win. The Rizbats end up with double digits in defense. that one. South uh, Carolina. Not to mention the steel, a lot of great contests as we speak. Uh, comes uh, along. Sorry, a lot of the rankings top become top more and true. And convincing that was a good game for them. Wisconsin. Ends up Wisconsin ends up falling to Oklahoma State. Thanks, Jason Crosser. His last minute bucket there gets them the win. Benari James and Davidson get the huge upset over Utah 84 82. James, James and Candy Doucette and the whole losing the majority of the game. California loses to Alabama 71 69. Levin Cutler hit the game, hits another game winner as time expires in that one. Gonzaga continues to struggle. As Arizona continues finding their stride, winning 85-78 over Gonzaga at home, no less. And number five goes down. And Washington State ends up losing at home thanks to Princeton remaining undefeated. Bruno John Misty and Tyshawn Penn combined for 49 in the 84-83 win over the Washington State Cougars. 
that's going to do it for our show today. No broadcasted games today, but Florida does play Michigan State in the non-broadcasted game. So look out for the update for that one later on this evening. Some more TV returns tomorrow. Dayton and Maryland is going to be the first game on broadcast tomorrow. For Maestro, everybody here at SimWorld TV, we're grateful for you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Remember, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. All that good stuff so you can know in all of our shows, videos, games, and streams go live for you all. Remember, SimWorld is the only place where you can see the game, be the, be game. the game. We'll see you tomorrow.